morning, Quad Copter 101 here, and today's shout out goes to Sam Holdsworth 420. Sam was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and this one's a shout out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quad Copter 101 here, and I got something neat for you today, folks. This is another remote ID module. Okay, now those folks out there uh, that have drones that are way more than 250 grams, you know by now that you probably need to have a remote ID module with that particular drone when you go fly it. Now, the remote ID modules that are out there, there's a lot of them that are ready to go. You know, here's one from this. This is from Drone Tag, actually, this little one here. Uh, but, you know, Drone Tag makes assortment of different remote ID modules. They have a one that's an all-in-one that's built and ready to go, and all you do is turn it on and off like so to get it started. However, this thing is heavy. <laughs> it weighs about 17.5 grams, and... Uh, all it really does is transmit, you know, you, you enter the data into it and it just transmits it. Uh, you can't actually interface with that data. So Drone Tank has an, another option that they have available uh, for their remote ID modules. A very lightweight solution, okay. Um, mainly this is intended for um, people who are worried about weight of the, of the remote ID module. Um, it's very lightweight, this thing I think weighs only a one gram. Um, with the base uh, remote ID module itself, but it also enables you to interface with uh, the flight control board of your drone, and I'm pointing mainly at the uh, FPV racer community here, folks, in that you it you can access the data on this as in terms of telemetry. Okay, so if you want to view the telemetry information, the GPS location, along with the speed of the uh, drone. Um, you will be able to with with this particular module that saves you from actually installing a GPS module on to your uh, drone because it's already built into the remote ID module and you can access the information with this and on top of it, like I said this thing only weighs about a gram so let's go over it and take a close look at it now it does meet well, first off let me mention this is not from China believe it or not this is from Czechoslovakia <laughs> Prague Czechos Czech Republic uh, I guess they don't call themselves Czechoslovakia anymore. I'm, I apologize, <laughs> but from the Czech Republic. Okay, this is uh, produced. Um, now, it meets the minimum requirements in world, worldwide RID compliance. Um, it's, again, it's meant to, to meet those requirements while um, maintaining a minimum weight solution. Now, it specifically, it meets ASD, STA, STAN, uh, and uh, ASTM standards, along with uh, Federal Communication Commission and CE uh, approved and certified uh, radio as approved and certified radio module for both FCC and CE, CE being Europe. Now that transmits the remote ID data via Bluetooth 4 and 5. The idea, it, there's no Wi-Fi transmitted from this, it's just Bluetooth only. And the idea is when you're using Bluetooth instead of Wi-Fi, it mitigates the radio inf interference that you might have with controlling the drone. Okay, uh, Wi-Fi tr transmits non-stop on 2.4 gigahertz, and that can interfere with uh, your reception on your drone. So with Bluetooth, you know, uh, this is intermittent transmission, I believe. Uh, it, it's uh, less likely to cause problems with uh, re uh, reception on your drone. Now, the range on this thing is supposedly up to 3 kilometers transmission range, which is pretty hefty range for a little... Uh, our ID module like this okay and again I mentioned it only weighs 1.3 grams without the antennas okay um, let me now and also mentioned it uh, includes a built-in GPS and enables the transmission of the drones location data and includes also a seven minute capacitor uh, built into it to temporarily power this and maintain the GPS lock in case you need to cycle power on your drone, you know, switch batteries on your drone, um, this will maintain that fix for seven minutes so you don't have to go around searching for satellites again after you swap batteries. Um, additionally, it includes built-in flash memory to store flight data if you want to go over the flight data afterwards. You can do such. Now, the, mod the module is powered by 3.3 uh, .3 volts to 17 volts power. Now, that power input is through these two little either of these two little JST connectors. There's a three-pin JST connector and a four-pin JST connector. Now, um, the difference being that uh, the three-pin you can hook into a battery 
uh, supply, you know, your own power supply battery. With the four pin, though, you can also hook into the flight control board directly, uh, UART port on your flight control board, and power this, uh, this through the uh, flight control board. Additionally, using the UART, you're unable to, you will be able to access the uh, GPS data uh, and set it up on uh, via um, Betaflight so that you can view that data on your goggles. Additionally, through this UART port, you can connect it to Futaba and Spectrum receivers to uh, also transmit that telemetry data that way through the, those receivers. Now, to avoid damage to this module, notice that it's exposed on both sides of this little thing here. To avoid damage to the module, you do need, you should put it into a, some type of pr protective sleeve, such as the, this provided shrink wrap that they give you. And I'm going to show you doing such like so. Just slide it into the shrink wrap and then use a heat gun to shrink it down. Um, additionally, you it, they also provide you with this uh, little if you don't want to use shrink wrap, <laughs> they provide you with this little uh, plastic case that uh, you can install both the battery and the module into this case and you use it that way. So that's two options. However, this case does add some weight. It's 1.6 grams added weight along with this battery adds 1.9 grams. So you, with the case, the module, and the battery uh, added the total weight of the system in that case would be 4.8 grams. So keep that in mind. That does add weight if you go that route using the case. Now, um, let's see. This is configured. You configure this particular module using the uh, drone tag app available on Play and on the App Store. Now, to set this up, it's, it's pretty simple to set it up. First off, you need to open up the app and provide an email address to register the drone with drone or register the module with drone tag. Uh, next you click on the profile icon in the app and after that you click on register device. Now the app will start scanning for nearby remote ID devices. You click on the, the device that's labeled uh, BS which means basic solution and then you confirm the device and write down the serial number that's provided for this device. That's the only way you're going to be able to see the serial number is through the app. You'll need to register that serial number uh, with the FAA and you do that separately on the FAA's website. Um, and then afterwards, you just simply clicking on the device brings up the remote ID status screen and on this screen you can monitor the GPS status before taking off and then once you gain a GPS fix you can click on take off to activate transmission from the device and the device will start transmitting its position. Now, before clicking on takeoff, you can also visually check the status of the device. It has a little LED light, and let's plug it in to show you that. Make sure I got the pins right. Pins go up. But a little status light. That It's uh, multiple different colors right now. I think it's yellow <laughs> right now. But green, standby. It's ready for flight. Yellow, it's not ready. It's searching for a GPS fix. Um, with the app, you, you click on takeoff, and it switches to white telling you that it's broadcasting once it switches to white. And if you see red, that means there's a malfunction and you need to restart the device. Now, in the United States, you only need the device's serial number to register this with the FA. Um, you don't need uh, any other data because they already got that. You should already be registered with the FAA as a recreational pilot. And let me make a caveat here that I'm only referring to recreational pilots. My channel is dedicated to beginners and intermediates, not advanced pilots. Most people have been with me for a long time and then they move on. And that's good. They're supposed to, okay, when they get better and uh, improved in their skills. But uh, for those beginner and intermediate pilots, um, keep in mind, all they need is your uh, serial number. They have all your data already at the FAA when you registered yourself. So you think of the serial number from this as a license, like a license plate number, okay, license plate. To uh, So if law enforcement does need to go research who that is out there, you know, if they see this uh, flying through an area that you shouldn't be flying, and they call up that remote ID, all they're going to get is that uh, serial number and then they go to the FAA and the FAA will investigate 
what's going on, okay? So it's their responsibility to do such. Now, other countries may require additional information besides just serial number. And that's capable, you're, it's capable of entering that data into this through the app. The app does cover additional countries, including Europe and Japan specifically. Let's mention that. So if your country does require a lot more information than what's provided, um, the, you can enter that data in here. But again, in the United States, all you need to enter uh, for the, uh, into the data and you don't actually need to enter, it's already in this, <laughs> built into it, is the serial number. So uh, more or less, you don't need to enter anything. That's what I'm trying to say, folks, in the United States. Okay, I haven't mentioned the antennas yet, folks. Now, you get two antennas with this package, okay? One is for the remote ID, and one is for the GPS reception antenna. The one that's labeled, one that's black, it's like so, that goes on the left. Again, that's your Bluetooth transmission antenna. The one that's on the right, is again it's a gray it has a little gray uh, knob on the bottom of it here but this is your gps antenna and it plugs in on the right now um, additionally what you get with this in addition to these two antennas you get uh, the shrink wrap if you want to use shrink wrap with this or you also get the protective case and mounting screws that go with this um, you get the gps module of course or the uh, remote ID module with built-in GPS, and you get the, the GPS and Bluetooth antennas. Um, you also get UART uh, and JST, well, these are actually JST cables, both of them, <laughs> but you get a four-pin JST cable for connecting with the UART on your drone, and you get a three-pin uh, JST cable for connecting straight to a power supply. But again, again, keep in mind, both of these, you can connect to power supply, um, you know, the red and black wire and the red and black wire are the same on both of these. So both of these can provide power through either of these two ports, again, is what I'm trying to say. Um, now, they also offer a combo package. And that in that combo package, you simply get the battery with the three-pin JST connector already for it. And a charger for that battery. It's a three-pin three connector hole that charges through a Type-C USB cable. Now, if you buy the combo package right now, it's quite a bit more expensive than simply buying these two items separately. So keep that in mind, folks. I don't know what, what the deal is there, but currently uh, the combo package is quite expensive. Yeah, and it's a lot, uh, I think it's like $20 cheaper if you buy these two separately to go with that. So keep that in mind. Let's see. Now, um, JST also offers additional packages. Again, I mentioned the basic package here. This is how the basic package comes. Again, no battery and no battery charger with this. Again, you'd consider this if you're going to be powering it uh, separately with, uh, say, the, the power source from the your drone's battery or from uh, the flight control board. You can go with the basic package. But they also do offer um, additional better antennas than what's provided here but keep in mind these will also add weight to your drone and make it a little more complex by putting it into these uh, putting these antennas on also these UFL antennas so finally I mentioned this case now this case can also hold all of these components and I want to demonstrate how to do such real quick before we call it quits here but you put in the battery first, the battery slides in like so, and goes and clips down on the bottom, and then you slide the battery connector down like so, and then you slide this in. Now you want this antenna to come out of this hole here, okay, the GPS antenna comes out of that hole there, and the Bluetooth antenna comes out of that hole there, or you can go out this back hole here, but... Um, it's better to separate these two antennas is the idea. So, you know, give them the best separation as possible, like so, and then slide it in on top. Wait a minute, let me get this wire out of the way again. It's pulled into the way. Okay, and slide that in, like so. Okay, I was able to 
slide this back out again, slide it back in again. But now I, I got this in there appropriately. You want uh, this, you know, these uh, U, UFL connectors do swivel, and you want this to come straight out instead of uh, being bunched up like it was there. So that's how it should look. <laughs> okay, so that's the Drone Tag BS uh, Basic Solution Gen 2. Uh, interesting uh, new way of getting remote ID. Very lightweight solution is the idea, folks, uh, with the uh, uh, ability to actually interface with this module so you can use the, the, G, or the GPS data, and, you know, the speed and the location, and uh, access that on your goggles, especially for FPV flyers. So, hope you enjoyed this review. This is Quadcopter 101, signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.